My name is Raps and welcome back to the Marissa Runs here in Slay the Spire Modded. There you are. Still gotta get burns. Still gotta get multi-attack. Uh, multi-attack, random attack. I think that's actually about it for the archetypes that we've yet to explore. Uh, whoa, did the character model just become smaller? Strange. Uh, okay. Two soulbound curses give you a random boss relic. Oh, that's probably because mi losing Mini Hacker on, on Marissa is real rough. But soulbound curse, two soulbound curses. Ooh. That's really rough. Because the boss relic that you might get might also give you curses. Like, instantly dead. Obtain a curse for two random colorless cards is a little bit more appealing, but I'm probably just going to go for the random common relic. Oh, that incentivizes a charge up build is the thing. Gives you extra energy next turn if you play no attacks in a turn. Which obviously fits into a charge up build because charge up builds oftentimes elect not to play their attacks. I've done the charge up build though. We'll see what is still offered past this point. One time off versus luminous strike versus deep ecological bomb. Don't have any reason to take any of those necessarily. Deep ecological bomb doesn't seem like it'll be good against the boss. I'll just take a one time off. Double defends got upgraded there. That's actually really powerful. Okay. Here's a problem. Light Bash is 8 damage amplify, also apply to vulnerable. Cool. Spell Core. I don't know. Ring of uh, Tsukuniko. Tsuchinoko? Tsuchinoko? Yeah. Uh, Ring of Tsuchinoko and Neutralize. I don't know what the Ring of Tsuchinoko is. I think I have to take them, though. Like, one of these two. Spellcore is probably, like, spell book, if I had to guess. Ring of Tsuchinoko. It is draw two additional cards on the first turn of each combat. Whenever you play a skill or a zero-cost card, gain one charge up. Certain green cards can now be obtained. Ooh! Hoo -hoo. Okay, that's one way to diversify the run. Interesting. So only our skills, uh, skills and zero cost cards that is, are going to give us charge up. That's really good. That's going to disincentivize the charge up build that I was kind of actually hoping to avoid. I actually couldn't even fire off charge up that turn. Not even if I wanted to. Because the strikes don't increment it. Mana Convection versus Energy Recoil versus Asteroid Belt. Uh, we're not really going to be able to capitalize on any of those yet. All right, Rosebush. Gonna deal as much damage as I possibly can when I can. Especially because I've already taken the highest damage bonus card out of my deck. So we are going to need something like a Master Spark. Ooh! What about an Orrery Sun? Whenever Charge Up is consumed, deal 8 damage to all enemies. Now, I usually don't take this because I usually don't try and trigger my Charge Up often. But it could provide some AoE in this deck. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I'm going to have to upgrade 623B. Just so that I have the ability to fire off the Ori Sun effect more often. Alright. You can see that I'm just setting up the charge up already. Okay. Ready to fire off on this turn. Yeah, not exactly the turn that I wanted to get it on, but uh maybe. We do want to trigger that charge up twice is the thing. Cuz 
that's two from Ori, but maybe that's not... Maybe that's not actually the way that I should be dealing with it. Maybe I just incremented a bunch, but I don't actually have anything that can really take advantage of it being ridiculously incremented. 24 damage. Okay, so Ori's son uh, doesn't trigger twice for exhausting two stacks of eight. But that makes sense. That's not how it's written that it would function. Hey. Spend, spend. Simple. Excuse me. Had to mute the mic so I could sneeze for a moment there. Alright, alright. I wonder if I play a zero cost skill, does it get affected twice by the ring of Suchinoko? Suchinoko, sorry. Uh Dream Cash or whatever you rescue mana card to your deck as well as the Emerald Key. Well, those are zero cost cards. And they burn themselves out of the deck. Sure, we'll be taking endless agony here. And the money from getting that dream catcher. Ori's son is going to be a significant amount of our damage. I'm trying... I'm picking it up with the intent to build around it. 10 foot pole dame... Uh, gate, rather, take 50% less damage outside of combat. You cannot be surprised or caught off guard by Mimics. Being caught off guard by Mimics is not actually that bad for us. We don't typically attack on the first turn. We've got a lot of setup to do. So I'll take the Sapphire Key in this position. We may actually get all of the keys here in the first floor. Which... Isn't common. to say the least. I'm setting up the Ori Sun plus Annie attack to kill that frontliner. probably going to take more damage in this fight than we did in... Hang on. Let me figure this out. Probably going to take more damage in this fight than we did in the Lagavulin fight, interestingly enough. Uh, Magic Flask. At campfires, the rest option may now be taken for free. This consumes one use. Starts with two uses. Kill bosses to gain two more uses. If you have Bottled Heart, when resting, Bottled Heart gains seven charges. Ooh, that's powerful. Cloak and Dagger is a skill that will then give me zero cost attacks. So, totally works with the Ring of Tsuchinoko. It does need to be upgraded as soon as possible, though. I've set it up so that the frontliner dies as soon as I get an AoE off. Which is now. Awesome. All right, Ori Sun. Mm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. 6A doesn't really have a position in this deck right now. It's a zero cost card, but it's not really going to benefit us, and we don't really want to build around it. We already have enough things in our deck to build around. Right. I'm going to rest and get another Ori Sun. I think I take the second Ori Sun over the Blade Dance here just because I want the extra AoE because we're kind of missing some AoE right now. And then it's Smith the Cloak and Dagger. <laughs> Molten Egg. Whenever you have an attack card to your deck, upgrade it. Ori Sun Adrenaline. If I take the Molten Egg... I don't actually play that many attacks in this deck. I need to play skills that give me zero cost attacks. So I don't think Molten Egg is actually probably correct for me here. It might be Bargain Bundle so that I can take Ori Sun and Adrenaline. So I'd be paying, what, 51? So Bargain Bundle, by the way, whenever you purchase this relic, the cost of cards, relics, and potions, and the card removal service in the same shop... Not relics, sorry. Everything but relics. Uh, in the same shop are reduced by 100%. 100 gold. 100%. Oh, keep misspeaking. 
So if I do that, Ori's son is free. I pay 51. So it's uh, what? Two. Yeah, it's totally that. Ori's son, adrenaline, and then I card remove a strike. Simple spark. I know it's not a strike. Uh, purity. If I had enough card draw, if I had more than just adrenaline in card draw is what I'm effectively saying, then I would take that so that I can start moving those simple strikes out of the deck, but no. no uh, so... I'm going to drop the weak potion here, actually. Yeah. And instead take the sweet potion. Okay. Eric, you and Poro. Mm, that's an Ori Sun right there. Oh, yes, 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 yes. 19 damage AoE whenever we trigger the... Another Ori Sun. All oh, right, I forgot that I had another one. I don't know how I forgot that, but yeah, I did. I managed to forget the weirdest things sometimes. I've usually quite a good memory, which is strange, but it, it doesn't seem like I would, but I kind of usually do. Frozen egg, whenever your power cards, your deck upgrade it. Energy flow literally is just to give us the extra ability to charge up our Ori every time, and it gets pre-upgraded as soon as we take it. Like, I don't think there was even an argument there. I think I have to do that. I think I may actually want to also Magic Flask here because it gives me another opportunity to add a card to my deck using the Dreamcatcher. No, that doesn't... Yeah, we don't want those. Um, I'm going to want both of the other Ori Sun upgraded as quickly as possible because not only is this boss fight an AoE fight, but so is the next lore. Another reason that the... Adrenaline, sorry, Adrenaline, the Endless Agony is particularly good in this deck. Just in case you still need to be sold on it. Another reason it's particularly good in this deck is loading up right now. Here it is. My brain is figuring out the reason. And the reason is you. was it? Oh, right. Because it's two triggers for zero energy. It's two triggers of the uh, the Ring of Tsuchinoko. Oh. Blow them all up. This is an Ori Sun build. This is unique. This is not something I've done before. Because I've had a couple of people say, oh, like, you're doing another zero cost build. Every time I did a zero cost build, I did a different payoff for it. Just because cards, uh, just because the deck includes zero cost cards doesn't make it the same archetype. That's like saying an ironclad deck is the same as another ironclad deck because they both use attacks. It's, it's so reductionist. Uh, no, we don't take any of these. If we had extra draw, we could consider the ultimate shortwave, but we don't, so we won't. Ooh. Slow cooker. Gain energy on the first turn. At, at the start of each turn, on the first turn of combat, lose two energy instead. That's really, 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 really rough because we have so much setup we need to get done on turn one. It might actually just be empty cage, remove two of those strikes. In fact, it is. I really want extra energy from somewhere, though. Oof, this is good. Not going to be able to get out the second Ori Sun that turn, but I think we'll all agree it was worth... Nice. We actually had excess energy at the very end of that turn. That's not always going to happen, but when it does, hell yeah. One time off gave me another card draw next turn as well, so it kind of balanced out its own negative there. Uh, nope, none of those. Ooh, capricious enemies. All right, all right, all right.
So we will be taking a little bit of damage here. Oh, not at all. Never mind. The extra action actually uh, cancelled that out. Beautiful. Uh huh. I'm not even going to throw any extra attacks in there. I don't want them to transform to something that actually could have been really potent. No, don't need any of those either. 12 card gremlin, purity versus master spark. Don't want to take parasite, so I'm making sure that I don't match it. Ooh, or his son. I would take witch upgrade. I can't. Witch upgrade is too expensive, especially if I want to get the extra effect from it. I really would have liked the Ori Sun at the very least, though. Medical's kit. Uh, medical kit. A playable status card can now be played. When we play a status card, exhaust it. That is going to give us the ability not only to take any bird card we want, um, but also to burn out the effects of the heart. The more negative effects, that is, of the heart. go. And now I can just target the backliner until hell yeah. Oh. Oh, it's just perfect. I love it. I mean, I can just full defend as well. Wait for another turn. Draw literally any attack for the win. Do it. Which ley line right now, in particular? I can just add the burns to my hand and then exhaust them. I some things consider exhausting zero cost card, uh, exhausting burns to be a zero cost card or playing them to be a zero cost card. Which this ley line is just going to be a lot of damage to capitalize on the charge up that we're building. So it's kind of just there as a charge up trigger, effectively. I want the second Ori Sun out, but more than that, I want the full defense this turn. I know that I can burn the wounds that the Book of Stabbing puts into my deck, but... One sec. Right, I should play out the rest of that hand. Uh, but what I can't necessarily do is prevent the draw disadvantage of still having to get them. Okay, that doesn't count towards anything, but that's fine. It doesn't have to. If I ordered that correctly, would there would that have been lethal? Ancient T set, whenever you enter a rest site, start the next combo, two extra energy. Uh, Shroom Brew, exhaust the card. Effects of the potion depend on the type of card you exhausted. Probably don't want to do that. Energy Flow, Ori Sun, Adrenaline. We do need to upgrade the Adrenaline so that we can play more things on turn one. Okay, drawing one additional card next turn, especially because we'll be confused, is quite handy. Yeah, that could have been a lot worse. Friori Sun. Nice. Fear Potion. Second Energy Flow. This isn't even like a, a stack up defensive energy deck as well. It's a completely different take on a charge up deck. That's one of the things I appreciate most here. Like it shares a lot in common, but it is also really unique. Awesome. We have gotten so lucky this run so far. Good lord.
And we are actually taking advantage of the Art of War occasionally as well. I really did not expect that. Alright, and... Murder! Matroshka, the next two boss relics you open contain two. Uh, nothing else there I want. Next two chests you open, non-boss chests you open contain two relics, rather. Pantograph at the start of boss combat heal for 25 HP, as well as the boot. Uh, whenever you take four or less unblocked, sorry, deal four or less unblocked attack damage. Increase it to five. Sorry, I was reading from memory the entry for Tori. I do want an extra rest. We have a lot more things to upgrade. And I also definitely want an extra elite because we have a lot more uh, potency left. Kind of figured that's how that one was going to go down. Awesome. Dorian, whenever you gain a debuff, gain temporary HP equal to the amount. At the start of your turn, reduce your turn-based debuffs to two. On pickup, increase your max HP by five. Uh, does 6A now have a position in this deck? Why would it? I actually can't see a reason for it, so no. It doesn't. Good. Setting myself up for a really good Ori Sun turn. Yeah, I definitely did that wrong. I shouldn't have played the the time off. Not then at least. Yeah, that's my bad. I misordered that. Uh uh. Don't want any of those either. Still got cards to upgrade. Actually, I really want to rest here and then upgrade a card. Those, though. I want adrenaline upgraded. And then we can even go into portal. Energy flow, energy flow, adrenaline. Ooh, that's not how I thought that turn was going down. Okay. I was figuring we would have all of our Ori's son out and just nuke someone. Looks like I was off by about a turn there. There we go. Uh-uh. No, I, I don't need an extra Witch's Ley Line. It'll, uh, it'll dilute my ability to get all of these cards active as early as I want them active. Upgrade all strikes and defends. That's literally just two defends and a strike. I think I straight up just remove another strike. Rest here, which breathe versus escape velocity. At the start of your turn, each turn rather, draw two more cards and add a burn to your hand, which we then just immediately burn with the medical kit. Oh. I'm going to obtain the ruby key because I realized that in all of my joy here, I may accidentally forget later. Not a huge fan of these piercing shots. Not that much I can do about them, unfortunately. Burn. Play the Ori's son on that. I do need extra energy really badly. If we don't get an energy relic after this boss, that's going to be a problem. Like, it's not relevant in this hand, but while I'm doing the setup, if I have to miss playing a, you know, particularly important spe uh, setup card, just because... 
That's right. Just because of the sound of a very sick goat. It's not going to be great. Just want one energy relic. That's it. I'd even take one that just gives you occasional energy. The extra draw that we have per turn. See how that's going to be a problem? It's because we're drawing two extra cards per turn and two extra cards on our first turn that's going to be contributing to this being a little bit uh, of a concern for us. Not like a monumental concern, but it's just a little bit. Yeah, nothing I really could have done to perfect this fight, unfortunately. All right. <clears throat> Amplify effects. Oh, gosh. That's nine cards every turn. Second escape velocity. Sure. Sure. Uh, Non-combat damage. Non-attack damage. No, that's really bad for us, obviously. Runic Octahedron. Now, Runic Octahedron is really good with this character. But we already have way too much draw. We need the extra energy. So for that reason, I'm going to be taking Busted Crown. It does limit my choices from here on out. But how much do you think I need them? I don't know how we're going to do against the heart. Like, we're going to get a significant amount of damage out. It's just whether or not we will be faster than the heart or the heart will be faster than us. I, I have my doubts. See what I mean about wanting that extra energy? We would have had to have cut one of those as well. That would have been tragic. Oh. Uh-uh. Double that. Upgrade all cards. You can no longer heal. No, we definitely need to be able to heal. Rare Relic or... Normality. The problem with normality is I can't burn it with any of the things that I currently have, so we'll go for the rare relic. We really want Mummified Hand. I'm not going to jinx it and say I would like Mummified Hand. Uh, so instead, I'm going to tell the game, Hey game, I hate Mummified Hand. I don't want you to give it to me because you've been giving me too much good stuff lately. Shh, let's see if it works. Actual slight concern here. The burns actually get added to our discard pile because we have a hand too full. So that means we still have to draw them. Awesome. <clears throat> Play literally any attack next turn. That'll do. Oh. Pocket watch. Whenever you play three or less, mm -hmm. throw fewer cards during your turn. Draw three additional cards at the start of your next turn. Those strength potions are saved for the final combat, by the way. That's a lot of extra cards every turn. When the Endless Agony is in our hand, it takes two slots. So that's why two burns go into our discard pile, by the way. I'm actually going to use the Swift Potion here for the Adrenaline, the ability to play Ori Sun. Yeah, 15 turn. Uh, 15 turns. 15 uh, cards played in that turn. Pocket Watch going to trigger. 
sort of a prop bad. Random, randomly gain either Oracalcum, Amplify Wand, or the Art of War. We already have Art of War, so we would get Oracalcum or Amplify Wand. Oracalcum would be useless. Amplify Wand would be triggered zero times per battle. Amplify Wand being gain five block every single time you trigger Amplify. I have to go for more elites. I just got her. Ori Sun, Ori Sun, Ori Sun, and which lay line the back line because it's time to start dealing damage. Got him. Uh. Ooh, look, it's Ori's son. Uh, energy flow is probably, I guess, really good, but I need it. I don't think so. Uh, obviously, one time should off should have been played instead of one of the defense there. We've got an extra draw. Uh, looks like I definitely didn't need any extra draw, though. Still, that doesn't retroactively make my move correct. Go, never stop playing them, and then boom. And then boom. And then boom. There we go. I knew it was going to happen one of those times. Hello, Rip Sonic Order. Somehow I feel like you're probably not going to like this one, bud. Ooh, boy. <laughs> Panash banana. Oh, lovely. <gasps> Awakened one's writ. Okay, you're actually just... You're trolling yourself here. Time for Panash. Flashing, dashing... Uh, flash and dashing... Raisin and Brash? All right. Uh, apparently, it's going to be me that doesn't like this one. I'm gonna enhance ability literally just for the block there, because it's really good. Let's charge up warming up. Eh, sure, you do that. Nice. Now that we triggered the ability, that's the timing ability on the enemy there, we just. Perfect. We can kind of just keep going until we win. Yeah, different ordering definitely would have helped there. Uh, whether or not matters, completely different question. Happy flower, every three turns gain an energy. Okay, I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, shovel the Guiding Star into your draw pile, gain energy at the start of each turn while it's in your draw pile. Our draw pile is extraordinarily thin. There would be no way that we would ever really get uh, benefits of that. Okay. Adrenaline. Okay. Yeah, three damage taken there. Not super pleased about it, but it's okay. It happens. And one HP left, just blow him up with Leyline. 
No, oh, don't want any of that. Cool. Uh, Spire Growth gave us Crystal Statue. Gain energy at the start of each turn. Breaks after you deal... Uh, sorry. Breaks after you take 20 unblocked attack damage. We will take an Essence of Steel there. This is going to be really good. I could be able to keep that around for a very long time. We'll see. Either we can or we can't. This deck needs more defense. Specifically for things like this is what I'm talking about. This deck just does not have a great way to defend itself. Like, I'm going to have to try and avoid triggering the Nightmare's effect just because... Wait, do they get worse or better when you trigger the effect now? I don't know for certain. Extremely cool there. Now, I definitely need to play out all of my defense here first. Okay. 36. Okay, Witch's Leyline is probably already lethal at this. Yeah. No, it's not. You want to know what happened there? I will tell you exactly what happened there. I thought Witch's Leyline was lethal because I forgot that the Nightmare now has 400 HP rather than 200 since that's a recent change. I just straight up forgot. Next attack could have been worse. Oh, we already broke the crystal statue. That hurts. Chameleon Ring. Your potion's now more potent. You can brute rest sides. Add a black card to the deck. Draw your entire draw pile. You cannot draw any more cards this turn. Exhausted too. I mean, like, yeah. We already have so much draw. Menacing, the next attack you play stunts. Yeah, but we don't use that. Sneko Purge. That gets really, really powerful, but I don't really want it. Tiny Chest and Lantern. Gain, uh, gain energy at the start of each combat is going to be really powerful for us, considering how much we need to set up on that first turn. Gosh, if this deck dies, I'm going to be so sad. And it'll be entirely my fault as well. It's not even the fun kind of sad when you get to blame someone else. Three. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I don't think we can actually win against the heart. We don't have a scaling element in this deck. Like, it's super valuable, but it doesn't get better over time. Unless, of course, I just stand there and wait for a bunch of charges. That is to say, a bunch of charges and then blow them up. No, don't want to do that to myself. Definitely drinking here. Machine Gun Spark. We have Boot, so it's literally 40 damage. Difficult to turn that down. We'll upgrade one time off. Excellent. Gonna need all of those Auris now. There we go. Auris, Auris, Auris. Okay. 
Yeah, in case you're wondering what happened there, I forgot that I stopped myself from triggering the effects that turn. Which is my bad. I played that as a defensive card, but it stopped me from being able to use the charge up. As much as I want to fight that elite, I think going for this shop is probably a better idea. No. Yeah. Ornamental fan. Every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain four block. We kind of do that regularly. Uh, orange pellets and bronze get. I'm going to clear the board on those and take Oath Cloud as well. Gain block equal to your charge up is interesting because we could literally just use that in the final combat. I'm removing Endless Agony. It helps us out in the start. But it gets significantly worse thereafter. That is to say, if I have it in my opening hand, it's really good. But if I have to draw it after I played both of my escape velocities, then it's really bad because it means that I put a bunch of burns into my draw pile. Right. Let's take the blanket and then sell a bunch of these that don't do anything for us anymore. Dream catch kind of still does. Bargain bundle we can sell. Empty cage we can sell. Uh, medical kit we can obviously laugh about the idea of possibly selling. I thought that'd be funny. Uh, pocket watch is literally useless. So is the crystal statue. Tiny chest. Uh, there's no question mark rooms from here on out. Awesome. We'll probably sell the magic flask uh, next floor. That. Yeah. I need the extra turn of neutralize, I think. I don't think I play both escape velocities in this combat just because of the awakened one. I think I can play one, though. I think the extra draw that we get from that is going to be so potent. Ori's Sun is our payoff for this deck as well, but I also don't really want to play that. We have to play Energy Flow. There's no two ways around that one, unfortunately. Ort Cloud is more defense than the strength that I give to the enemy there. Got to remember not to play Plated Armor or Cloud after one time off, which I just did. So uh, that's why that wasn't particularly good for us. And that definitely should have been one time off at the very end there. Actually would have prevented all damage that turn. Boo hiss. Right. All's going well so far. This could be a lot worse. And or son of the end. Sorry, defend one time off at the end of the turn, rather. I could get some damage out. It's just not the damage I need. The 64 every turn that's really going to be kind of the clinching factor for us. Right, so we took three damage in this combat so far. I say we took. We will probably take more than that overall, but so far that's all we've taken. And we can purge debuffs, so Orange Pellets has that use. Gotta remember, if I find the card that allows me to purge debuffs off of enemies... Ooh. 
uh, sorry, purge buffs off of enemies, uh, then I probably want to try and take that so I can see if I can nullify Beat of Death on the Heart Bite. That would be very good if I could do that. Awesome. I was really hoping we would get more ship cards over the course of this run, but they've actually kind of been few and far between, actually. All right. Ooh, Witch's Ley Line for the win. All right, let's see what we've got next floor. Go to the maximum, rest, go through to the heart. Obviously, I have to rest here just to see if I get a card that I want. I don't. Anything I actually desperately want to smith? I don't think there is. Yeah, for that reason, I'm actually going to brew here and see if we get anything that's desperately worthy. Not better than those. I need the damage. And the defense as well. Uh, Light Sheen Art. Upon pickup, lose 25% of your max HP at the start of each combat. Gain 3 regen. Not good for us. Play line. Cut affected by charge up. Uh -uh. Don't want any of those, unfortunately. Huh. Yeah, pretty sure this is just a hard pass. That's nah, rough. Like, I could sell relics here, but there's no reason to at this point. Like, this is just... Wow, that's, that's really not good for us. Vulnerability is nice-ish. I would have to play it always, if I ever play it, that is. But I would have to play it after one time off. I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Having vulnerability is going to help me get a lot of extra damage out of those. remove the tiny defend as well. Uh, do I fight the storekeeper for the block? I don't know if I could win against the storekeeper is the thing. They attack so quickly and so relentlessly. Could have been a lot worse. Or Cloud with its upgrade. Or his son. Definitely going to want to weaken the target directly in front of me. Machine Gun Spark for a ridiculous amount of damage. Thank you. 21. 18. Okay, we are going to need the... Extra block here, aren't we? Damn. Ow. Thankfully, the Pantograph is going to heal us when we go into the boss fight, but... If you're wondering why I'm still focusing on the Spire Spear here... Because if we finish that, we get to turn around. And then the rest of the fight is, you know, much easier. Cool. Gremlin food! Whenever you rest upgrade a random card in your deck, uh huh. Swap your strength and deck, draw two cards. I don't think I need the strength as much as I need the dex. This is these these strength potions are now dex potions for us. Okay. First things first, I'm gonna need to play one time off. 
Okay, so that proves something that uh, has been said in the comment section, and that's that X cost cards, weirdly, when you play an X cost card, the beat of death occurs before the effect of the X cost card. But if you play any other card, the effect occurs before the beat of death. So you can defend before beat of death triggers on you. Awesome. That's fine. I can burn the ones out of my deck that I really need burned out of my deck there. I just purged a bunch of debuffs off myself. Hell yeah. Thank you, Thorns, for the extra amount of damage you're kicking in for us. Yeah, somehow I knew the next hand was going to be pretty garbo. Hot garbage. Hot garbage. Hang on. Didn't manage to burn the slime out that turn, but that's still really good. Gotta drill it into my head, defend first. I like that the enemy can't debuff me. That's good. That's, that's, a, that's a step in the right direction right there. Okay, so unfortunately I can't get through the enemies artifacting this turn. So I'm not going to be able to weaken them. But what I should be able to do is get a really ridiculous energy recoil off. Very nice. Set up for a really giant witch's ley line. So I can weaken the enemy here this turn. That's really good. Do I want the extra block this turn, or do I want to finally play that Ori Sun, get it out of the hands? It's not even the hand I want to get it out of. It's the deck. Oh, okay. Never mind. I think... I think the extra decks clinched it for us. I think it's the shift potion that really, really came in clutch here. All right. Literally just next turn, which is Leyline for the win, right? Or we could just not draw it. That's cool too. There we go. That could not have gone better. All right. I think it's time to start playing the other characters again. I think it's time to go back to standard rotations and the like. But for the moment, my name is Ben Rhapsody. The name of the game has been slayed this by a modded. Specifically, we were playing the Marisa character mod. All of the mods that are installed in each and every episode of this series are linked in the description down below, as well as all of my contents on this game, past, present, and future. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.